Good afternoon, Crap to Cream. As you can now see, the right hand drive windscreen has now been installed. Bet that got your attention. Anyway, it's installed and not without a few challenges as you would expect. So I, when I bought the the packers to go inside the wing for the, I also bought some packing shims, right? That come with the, and they, you know, you can buy them. So my advice, based on my experience, is if you don't need them or you have, have you only got a puffteenth to make up, I wouldn't bother. They are more of a pain in the backside than they are honestly really worth. So the vinyl's all really good and the more the, the more observant might notice that in the center support bracket here when I was trying to get the bolts in to line up with the captive nuts that are held underneath the dash it was very very difficult and it was becoming very very frustrating so in the end what I did was I wound a bolt up from the underneath so the thread came through and then I screwed two nylock nuts onto it I know it's not standard and I mine's not a concourse car but it made doing this job an awful lot easier than trying to get those bolts in underneath there and trying to get them to line up with the threads underneath so it worked for me and it's all it's all tightened down onto the packer and everything and it's really really good you might be able to see I've got the stainless steel cap head screws over there which hold the windscreen in place now so I've got them on that side and got obviously two on this side as well the gaps took a little bit of sorting out but that's like really quite as good as I can get it so consider that these these rubbers weren't even on the car when I bought it that's a lot better than it was I've also got all the screws in the top here now three of those were missing when I also got the car and what I used was I used this right um, it's a rather large I would say sash clamp to squeeze the so I used that to squeeze the this down so they could get the bolt in these are used rubbers but they're not cracked and they're in good condition so I didn't put a new one in and I first used that when I had my other car with a brand new rubber on it it was and I left it for 24 hours to compress the gasket or the seal sorry the windscreen seal so all this is in really good nick now it's all been replaced and all looks good and hopefully you can see the nylock nuts there and then yep there's the cap head screws here with the new washers now well, there you go that's that done and this one yep same deal I've got to cut the rubber off here yet but I left it a bit long but that's all good now no wind can get in there like it could on my old car on my other car so that's all that done happy with the windscreen that's a good thing I've now finished all the plumbing and connections on the supercharger so thank you very much to Stuart from VMAX he gave me some guiding guidance on to what to do and how to do it so this goes through now to my boost gauge inside the car the two charge cooler connections are connected together in reality I could have just left them open because there's no charge cooler thank the Lord for um, cable ties because they hold everything in place now the servo lines connected the fuel line is connected with a little filter in there as well I'm gonna make a bracket up to there so that the choke cable isn't running so close to the belts but yeah it's all in place now the other thing was I got these two carb bypasses um, and Stuart explained to me where they went and what they do so I've decided at this time because that's a modification that he came up with later to make it better 
So what I've decided to do, I've just decided to connect them together rather than take the supercharger off again and try and get that to work. And there's a balancing act between getting this tube the right length so that the accelerator mechanism doesn't hit it. So it's sort of in between the accelerator and the nut that holds the spindle inside the carburetor. So anyway, I did a little bit of a modification on that bracket so that fits perfectly now onto the um, rocker, or onto the carburetor and misses the rocker cover. So that's all good to go. So now I'll have to get some focus on finishing off what's going on inside the car. So I've got a new oil line flex, new flex, the distributor's in now. I'm going to make a bracket up for the clutch bleed nipple, which will go here, which seems like a logical place to put it. Got to tighten up the oil filter housing and then put an oil filter on there. And then I'm going to focus on getting the dashboard back in again. Getting all the electric sorted out inside. All right, so there you go. That's the latest update. Thanks for subscribing and for viewing. The numbers are really good right now. I'm very surprised, but yeah, thank you very much indeed for all the comments. And I'll, uh, yeah, bye for now.